One company is emerging as a leading firm in the global IT market. This company is full of talented workers with outstanding educational backgrounds. However, along with the company's success, the workers seem to be overly resting on their laurels. So the worried CEO began emphasizing the need to change and innovate, but it is much easier said than done. How can we solve this? John C. Maxwell, a world-famous leadership expert, said that without self-reflection, one could miss a lesson from one's experience. Then he further explained that self-reflection contributes not only to helping individuals develop themselves, but also in continuously changing and innovating a company. As you can see, self-reflection is a powerful influence. There is a company that really emphasizes self-reflection. It is Huawei, a Chinese IT company. Ren Zhengfei, the founder and president of Huawei, also dealt with the aforementioned worries. He thought that his workers should have the will to keep improving themselves, which enables the company to stay competitive in the fast-changing IT industry. However, as the company became successful, the employees seemed to become complacent. How did he tackle this problem? First, the CEO set an example for his employees by examining and developing himself. Above all, he carefully looked at successful companies and visited six international communications equipment firms from 1993 to 1995. There, he checked their systematic research and development models and management systems, figuring out exactly what his company lacked. Then, he received continuous feedback from experts and improved the company's management methods. He prepared a room right next to his office and invited professors from Renmin University of China, receiving frequent advice from them. Furthermore, he admitted his own mistakes in front of his employees. Once, he found out that an internal startup campaign, which he suggested, was engaged in illegal transactions and corruption. At the time, he did not try to hide his faults and asked a professional agency to investigate his company. He revealed all of the illegal activities to his employees and announced that he was the one responsible. Then, in order to correct his mistakes, he organized an investigative team consisting of outside personnel. Second, he created a system that enabled executives to take the lead in examining themselves. When he selected executives, he thought highly of those who solved their mistakes and improved their skills. He believed those workers would continue to grow while correcting their shortcomings. Furthermore, he also provided an opportunity for executives to share their self-reflective discoveries with the staff. He launched a column titled Reflection in the company newsletter. This included stories about executives' self-reflections on their business mistakes. He also had executives share what they had learned through self-reflection at department meetings. With executives setting such examples, middle managers, such as department heads and team leaders, also started to reflect on their mistakes. Third, he helped employees develop the habit of self-reflection. He created the Self-Reflection Advisory Committee in 2008. The company held meetings regularly, giving time for self-reflection to each department's workers. For example, in 2009, there was a large conference in which about 3,000 researchers participated. At the conference, the committee head gave each researcher a certificate and a nice-looking box. He had them open the boxes, and they were startled. Inside were useless things, bills for cancellation fees and accommodation receipts, among others. This aimed to push them to reflect on themselves, the results of failed projects and excessive spending. Then, the Research and Development Center began examining the processes thoroughly in order to reduce time and cost. They pinpointed areas where too many resources were being put into, and they continued to write the broken ship. Also, the researchers periodically wrote performance reflection reports and received feedback from the committee to improve themselves. Thanks to this, Huawei became a high-tech company with the largest number of international patents in the field. This self-reflecting attitude, which eventually became part of the company's culture, helped Huawei become the number two IT company in only 20 years. Founded with a capital of 21,000 yuan, the company recorded 176 billion yuan in sales in the first half of 2015. Also, Ren Zhengfei was selected as one of the world's 100 most influential people by Time magazine. Are you worried about your employees' complacencies? First, like Huawei, let the CEO take the initiative in participating self-reflection. Second, create a system in which executives set examples. Third, set up regular meetings in which companies can reflect on themselves and seek improvements. As water flows from top to bottom, self-reflection will naturally take root within a company's culture. Then all employees will continue to seek ways to improve themselves.